Welcome back. In this video, we're going to program the gameplay logic and finish our game. Let's start with creating maps or game boards. First of all, we need three two-dimensional arrays. The first two-dimensional array will contain players' ships' position data. The other one are enemies' ships' positions data. The last one will represent unknown territory that the player will have to scout out, locate enemies' ships and destroy them. Then, init ship position helps the player position his ships on the map, and init enemy ship position randomizes enemy ships' positions. Let's take a closer look at these functions. Init ship position function takes a reference as an argument. Then we display the player's map. Display is a custom function that draws a table grid using for loops. I just copied the code from the previous video on tic-tac-toe. Then we prompt the user to enter the position of a ship. We convert characters to integers and clear the screen by printing 30 new lines. Afterwards, we check if the coordinates are greater than the array length. If so, we output an error message and return to the beginning. The continue statement skips the current iteration of the loop and starts from the beginning. That means the code down below will not be executed. Then we check if the coordinates do not point to an empty space. We output an error and start anew. The reason we do this is because we do not want to assign the same position to multiple ships, and if everything is alright, we assign the position to a ship and increment number of ships by one. Once the player has created the maximum number of ships, we break from the loop and return to the gameplay function. Now let's take a look at the init enemy ship position function. The function randomizes the coordinates. Then we check if the coordinates point to an empty space. If not, we skip the iteration and start anew. Otherwise, we assign that position to a ship and increment number of ships by one. Once the maximum number of ships has been created, we break from the loop and return to the gameplay function. And here comes the game logic and game loop. First of all, we need to track how many ships have been destroyed by the player and by the enemy. We also need a boolean data type. If game won is true, it means the player has won the game. If it equals to false, the player has lost. Then the game will continue running until the game state does not equal to exit. Inside the loop, we display the player's map and territory map. Then we prompt the user to scout the area and attack. We read the user input, convert it to integers, and do some checking. This is the same code from the init player function. The only difference is that we we'll also check if the player wants to exit the game. Let's move on. First of all, we do not want to attack the same coordinate twice. Secondly, if we hit the enemy, we assign X to both territory and enemy map arrays. Then we increment player ships destroyed by 1. Finally, if no ship has been found, we mark the territory with O character. And down below we check if the player has destroyed all of the enemy's ships. Next, the enemy attacks. The function receives an array and integer reference. The code is pretty much the same as with the player. The only difference is the randomization of the coordinates. This is the same if statement as with the player. However, game 1 is false. And finally, in the very end, we clear the screen. And if the player has won, output you won, otherwise we display the map to show the damage and print you lost. Then we return to the main. Since game state equals to exit, we break out from the loop and thank the player. Alright, let's test out the game.
Alright, that's it. It is possible to make the code shorter, try to play with the code and change a few things. This was our last console game in this series. In the next video, we will install Raylib graphics library and start making 2D games. Have a nice day!